Liam Hendricks has said that he may have been pitching with cancer in his body in 21 and 22. Liam Hendricks, 96, strike one. His first pitch after striking out cancer is a strike. Welcome back, Liam Hendricks. He won the biggest battle of his life already. Now it's time to go out and win this one. Goosebumps. Yes, taking it all in. What a moment this is. I'm fighting to thanks for inspiring. That was May 29th of last season. Uh, Liam Hendricks oh. returning to the White Sox after beating cancer, undergoing treatment, and then wouldn't you know it, uh, a handful of appearances, and then the elbow betrayed him, and he missed the rest of the season, had Tommy John surgery, but that did not stop a number of teams' interest in his services for this year and beyond. He signed a two-year deal with the Red Sox with the understanding that he wouldn't be able to pitch in the short term, but the Red Sox are so, uh, so big believers in his ability that they're willing to kind of eat a year while he rehabs to get him healthy and get him back on the mound. And Liam joins us uh, in his new spring training home. Uh, Liam, good morning. Thanks for the time. I would imagine that for you, a uh, guy who loves to compete, you're with a new team and you can't pitch yet. You just want to rip that Band-Aid off and get out there. How hard is it to fight that impulse? Yeah, it's been tough. Um, obviously, going through the throwing program right now, I've actually had to, I've been told I have to slow it down a little bit. I got a little too uh, overzealous with the velocity. So we're re reining it back in. But hey, the plans will be ready in August. So uh, there'll be times where I'm back this year for sure, or not for sure, but that's my goal. That's my plan. And uh, yeah, try and get back as soon as I can this year. And for right now, I'm uh, a glorified coach and I can help try and uh, be a, a positive influence in the clubhouse. No, that's got to be fun. Hey, hey, Liam, I was just thinking, well, I got a couple of questions on you from what you went through before. How, how's it nice? How's it feel to be not on all that medicine? And what is that like when you're on all those medicines? Yeah, it wasn't great. Obviously, my biggest uh, side effect was nausea. And so um, I had to eat a lot. And mm. so I ended up gaining about 40 pounds, which is, uh, yeah, the opposite of what you'd expect going through going through chemo. But uh yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a great time, but yeah, nausea and then just tired a lot. But uh, look, it's part and parcel. I had a lot less side effects than some people. Uh, and uh, what I've noticed now is the more I talk about it and the more I get people to talk about it, the better it gets and uh, try and uh, bridge that gap. Well, I, I think you landed in the perfect spot. I mean, Boston's the medical capital of the country. When you start thinking about all those universities and doctors and everything else, I'm, I'm curious, did that play into your signing with the Sox at all, being able to to continue to move this forward, the message? Uh, uh, a little bit. Um, obviously, being have the access like the Boston Red Sox came into it a lot. But to be honest, two of the big things were the fact that uh, the head trainer was like, no, I don't envision a world where Liam Hendricks does not pitch for the 2024 Red Sox. That was a big deal. Mm. Uh, being able to travel with the guys while rehabbing was a huge deal as well, because being out of a clubhouse for the first few months last year, just it's, it's tough. I mean. There's only so much time I can spend with my wife alone, and we needed we needed a little separation in there. So, she uh, needed it too. <laughs> hey, how about did did the? Oh, uh, for, I think it's mainly for her than me. Did, did the 11 punch outs per nine for your career at Fenway Park have anything to do with it? You've had some pretty good days in that ballpark. <laughs> Yeah, I've had some decent ones there. Um, for whatever reason, though, it's just I've gotten lucky a couple times as well. But uh, I was actually looking at some videos the other day. But I always see, want to see how I've done against some guys. And yeah, there's there's a couple guys I've got. There's a couple guys that have got me in this team. But um, yeah, it's it's been a good ballpark for me. And now I get a chance to be with it, probably the closest place in America to my accent because neither of us really pronounce our R's. <laughs> I never thought about that, is it? Hey, you just mentioned um, that the, the trainer that is there envisions you pitching in 2024. So give me the timetable. What's the workout look like? What are you doing right now to rehab that where you might pitch this year? Yeah, so I'm bad. I just hit uh, three day or three three sessions of 25 throws of 60 feet the other day, and uh, they had to rein me in because they said uh, volume is more important than velocity right now. So that was a big one for me to tamper down a little bit because I'm meant to be around 64 miles an hour uh, according to my schedule, and I hit 77 the other day. So they told me I had to slow it down a little. So look, I'm going. I'm ahead of where I need to be. Um, they're looking at trying to accelerate, but as I said, my goal is 12 months on the dot, which is which will be August-ish, so trade deadline-ish, 
and uh, that's the goal now. And uh, look, I, I was meant to do six rounds of chemo last year. I got through four, so let's uh, let's try and push this thing a little bit too. Yeah, there's nothing for a guy like you. I I'm always curious about uh, for you. You know, you've been in the big leagues 13 years, Liam. Three All-Star appearances. Veteran guy, obviously, with a, a long track record. Where did they put your locker in your new clubhouse? Did you have any input? Give us some of the some of the your early cultural takeaways from the Red Sox. <laughs> No, no, I'm smack bang in the middle of a couple guys. Uh, but look, it, it's a good way to ingratiate yourself into the uh, the Red Sox community while being in the middle of the the middle of the lockers. So I'm right next to Bello and Winkowski, uh, so getting a chance to meet those guys and actually interact. And then um, someone's got to keep Giolito on on track and uh, wear him out a little bit. So I've reunited with a couple ex teammates, a couple guys I've played against, played with, and. Uh, it's been a good vibe, especially with a guy like Breslow in the front office, who's a former player, and, and Andrew Bailey, who's the pitching coach and quarter behind uh, managing it all. It's uh, yeah, we've got uh, we've got some dudes out there with some playing experience, which uh, they get the clubhouse, they get the vibe, and they're trying to build a family and they're trying to build a legacy here, and that's something that I can really rally behind. Yeah, it's a good group you're with, and I, I know you probably don't know a lot about it, but we have to ask you. We got the news that Lucas Giolito has uh, potentially something going on with the elbow. Is he in camp today, or is he has he been removed already? No, 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 he's here. He's um, yeah, I spoke to him a little bit, and that's that's for him to discuss. But uh, yeah, look, obviously. He's, uh, he's got a little something going on, and hopefully uh, we can get him back as soon as possible because, I mean, he's a big part of this clubhouse already for me, even me coming into it, and uh, what he can bring, especially to the rotation. I've, I've seen him at his best. I've seen him uh, struggle with some things, and uh, the way he's been able to rebound in a couple of years, it's, uh, it's going to be impressive to watch. Hopefully he comes back here shortly and uh, can really solidify that, uh, that vibe. Hey, so no games. Well, games have started now. But you're talking about maybe having an impact on some of the younger players and different pitchers and stuff. It's easier to do when you watch guys pitching a game. What, what, what have you seen so far when you're watching some of the young pitchers coming along? Yeah, I mean, well, we've got a pretty decent little competition going in camp about the guys with the best uh, strike percentage, first pitch strikes, and uh, the get ahead, so the two out of threes kind of thing. So we're building a little bit of a rivalry out there, and I've um, I've got a, uh, a championship belt coming for the strikeout prize for the relievers. So <laughs> actually awesome. waiting to get a couple like the images going, so we can have the uh, the K men K on the side of the belt as well, so really kind of focus in on that Boston aspect. So. Uh, which it's a, it's a competition because I mean, friendly competition can just uh, it can really elevate things. I mean, you look at the, the 2021 White Sox bullpen. And that's what we had. We had a, a strikeout prize when K when uh, Kimbrel came across, and I mean it elevated everybody's game out there because everyone wanted that little uh, wanted that little prize to sit in their locker and take it home. I think it's sitting on Aaron Bummer's mantle right now. So everyone's uh, vying for that right now. So Harold already anointed Boston as the medical capital of the country with his vast uh, expertise in the medical <laughs> field. Uh, we, we could say beyond that that Boston is a sports crazy place. I think we That's could agree true. on that for sure. If you're yeah. going to endorse and become a fan of one of the other pro sports teams in your new home, would it be the Bruins, the Celtics, Oof. or the Patriots? Which one <laughs> of those would you be quickest to embrace? Uh, well, as much as I, I am a hockey guy, I, it can't be the Bruins. I'm a Montreal fan, so I'm deep in enemy territory with that. But I'm just really hoping the fact that they like the fact that I'm a hockey fan, and I'm, I think we've already got tickets to the to the Bruins game when we first get out there. So uh, it, it it will most likely be, I think, probably the Celtics. I think that's the one you watch as a kid, uh, the basketball back home. It's, um, you know, I mean, the this, the legacy of uh, of a guy like Larry Bird. It's a uh, and that'll probably be one and look I, I just I love events so whether we get out to go to Gillette Stadium I mean I've been there for the Winter Classic before as hockey but if we get a chance to go out there for football if we get a chance to do anything there I'm just I'm here for the events and uh, <laughs> looking forward to being out of being a part of it because as you said Boston's a huge sports city and I can't wait to be a part of it. Yeah Celtics is the right answer there I think as much I don't I, I the Bruins are really Allegedly. good uh, Patriots are you know, go get him next year. He's definitely enemy territory, man. Yeah, no, as, as an, yeah, for sure. Jason Tatum's a stud too, man. Love yeah. watching that dude. Hey, Liam, we appreciate the visit today as always, um, and we wish you the best in your rehab, and can't wait to see you get back out there after the All-Star break.